Welcome. I'm Pastor Wayner, and this is Bryson City United Methodist Church, where God is good all the time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Well, welcome to a really special service. We're excited uh, for a lot of new things that we're going to try out today on you. So uh, hold on to your seats. But in the meantime, let's turn our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you today with our hearts open, open to your grace at work in our lives. Transform us by your love so that we might share your love with others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so um, for this first part, I want to make sure that um, you've got two things. All right? So you need... You need your little uh, palm frond, right? Did everybody get a palm frond? Because you got to wave it. you got to wave it because our, our kids are going to help uh, start the service by waving palm fronds with us. Okay? So we got to wave with them. All right? The second thing you're going to need for this one is your hymn book for those of you who are in-house. All right? For those of you who are watching, joining us online, fake it. <laughs> so... Uh, at least for now, we're going to come up with some, some music and words for y'all uh, soon. But anyway, if you want to, you can, uh, you know, maybe just wave a piece of paper. Or if it feels silly with you waving a piece of paper at home, you can just maybe wave yourself and just go, glory. So uh, whatever works. And so what we're going to do is we're going to invite our congregation to stand because we want to be able to sing as best we can, but also wave our palm fronds as the kids come in.
Thank you for that beautiful rendition of that song. I don't, I don't know if anybody else, when they were playing, did anybody else have the words going through their head from that song? That is beautiful. So thank you. Thank you so much. And so this last week in our newsletter, we sent out a little um, introduction that we do every week for the, the message that's coming up uh, this Sunday, today. And so I, I mentioned... Uh, uh, a joke about poor little Joey. Now, if you, if you missed that part, let me go ahead and just fill you in. If, you, if you've already read it in the newsletter, laugh anyway, make me feel good, all right? So, uh, little Joey was so excited to go to church one Sunday. It was Palm Sunday. He knew they'd be waving the palms, and it would just be big action. It'd be so much fun, but he got sick, and so he had to stay home. He was so bummed, poor little Joey. And so, you know, he stays home with a sitter, and then, you know, the rest of the family goes to church, and, and then they come back, and, and you ask him, what did I miss? And, you know, his dad says, well, it was Palm Sunday, and, you know, we, we waved branches for Jesus to walk through, and it was just a, it was a great Sunday. And little Joey goes, oh, man, the one Sunday I missed, Jesus shows up. And so you don't want to miss that Sunday, do you? You want to be there when Jesus shows up. And so today, uh, maybe Jesus is going to show up here in just a little bit. And so uh, today is, is what we call uh, Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. It'll show up in, in most uh, calendars as Palm slash Passion Sunday. So we call it the Slash Day. And... Um, these are found in, in lectionary readings where we, you know, continue to, to read scripture. It's often how we base our sermons uh, for Sunday morning. Uh, and, and, and each one may go just a little bit differently. And we've got a, a choice uh, between these two because they're two dramatically different themes. You know, Palm Sunday, as you have seen, is a, is a day of celebration. Basically, they waved their palms when Jesus walked into Jerusalem that one last time, and people were celebrating with hallelujahs and hosannas and welcome to uh, Jerusalem, our Messiah. And so that is, it's a day of celebration. It's a day of joy and shouting and coming together as we welcome the king. In the context of the Holy Week, though, it's uh, probably a little bit early to get too focused on just celebration. We tend to, when we just celebrate Palm Sunday and then turn right around and celebrate Easter the next day, sometimes we, we forget the in-between parts. We forget kind of the suffering. We forget the loss. We forget what Jesus went through to get to that place. And how he, you know, what he went through to prove God's love for us, right? And so, I think it's important for us to just remember that. Because it, it plays into our lives so much each and every day. I mean, wouldn't it be great if every day was a celebration? But then it's not, is it? Man, there's days that we just want to do over. There might be weeks that we want to do over. You know, they've, they've got so much pain, they've got loss, they've just all the things that we just don't want to mess with. We want to, we want to jo uh, jump from the Palm Sunday to the Easter Sunday and just focus on the celebrations. But Jesus reminds us that, that this reading today reminds us, the passion part of this reading reminds us that, that God is with us in our pain. That God joins us because there are real times where we're in between those celebrations and sometimes those, those times seem really long in between. Maybe even like two years of pandemic life, right? But it reminds us especially that, that God is with us, that God is willing to, to suffer with us and to love us in our suffering as well. And so today we're going to do a dramatic reading, and I've got some, 
some helpers with me today. Remember, I talked about inviting Jesus up and then our friend Pilate. We're not sure if he works for US Air or Delta, but we're going to have Pilate come up and join us. And Jesus, come on up and join us too. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. And so this is the passion part, or part of the passion part of the Passion and Palm Sunday reading. This is from Luke 23. The whole assembly got up and led Jesus to Pilate and began to accuse him. They said, we have found this man misleading our people, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar, and claiming that he is the Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? That's what you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no legal basis for action against this man. But they objected strenuously, saying, He agitates the people with his teaching throughout Judea, starting from Galilee all the way here. Hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was from Herod's district, Pilate sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus, for he had heard about Jesus and had wanted to see him for quite some time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some sign. Herod questioned Jesus at length, but Jesus didn't really respond to him. The chief priests and the legal experts were there fiercely accusing Jesus. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt. Herod mocked him by dressing Jesus in elegant clothes and sending him back to Pilate. Pilate and Herod became friends with each day, or with each other that day. Before this, they had been bitter enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers of the people, and he said to them, You have brought this man before me as one who was misleading the people. I have questioned him in your presence and found nothing in this man's conduct that provides a legal basis for the charges you have brought against him. Neither did Herod, because Herod returned him to us. He's done nothing that deserves death. Therefore, I will give him, have him whipped and let him go. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Now Barabbas had been thrown into prison because of a riot that had occurred in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? I found no legal basis for the death penalty in this case. Therefore, I will have him whipped, then let him go. But they were adamant, shouting their demand that Jesus be crucified. Their voices won out. Pilate issued his decision to grant their request. He released the one that they asked for, who had been thrown into prison because of riot and murder. But he handed over Jesus to their will. As they led Jesus away, they grabbed Simon, a man from Cyrene, who was coming in from the countryside. They put the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women, who were there mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Rather, cry for yourselves and your children. The time will come when they will say, Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant, the wombs that never gave birth, and the breasts that never nursed a child. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, and they came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the king of the Jews, 
Save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God? Seeing that you've also been sentenced to die, aren't we rightly condemned? For we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock. While the sun stopped shining, then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle, crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. When the centurion saw what had happened, he praised God, saying, It's really true. This man was righteous. All the crowds who had come together to see this event returned to their homes beating their chest after seeing what had happened. And everyone who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance observing these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. And so obviously this was an action-packed week, right? This, this week between Palm Sunday when Jesus was welcomed ceremoniously into Jerusalem and, and the resurrection. It was a week of a lot of pain. It, and it started off with shouts of Hosanna and Hallelujah, but also included a lot of manipulation and mob, and mob mentality had preparation and prayer, dinner, deception, denial, and death, suffering, and serving. All of it covered with love and loss. You see, this is why we can't just jump from from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday as much as we'd like to. And believe me, I'm right there with you, wanting to. Because any kind of a celebration that we can have these days, it really seems warranted, doesn't it? In Jesus' story, we recognize that that we just can't ignore the pain. We can't ignore Jesus' pain. We can't ignore the pain in our lives. Sometimes this, this pain is so bad that it just completely overwhelms us. But Jesus' story, again, reminds us that even in our pain, Just as in Jesus' pain, God is with us. God loves us. And God carries us through the hard times. Now many in our congregation have lost loved ones over the past few years. And you have demonstrated great strength and grace. You have exhibited this grace on, on a journey of, of painful loss, which sometimes feels like it takes forever, and sometimes is over in just a minute. But it's a story of passion and true love, like Jesus' story. And I believe that Jesus recognizes God's love in each of us when we do that. You know, this week is a reminder that we have a Savior who is acquainted with sorrow and knows our pain. This is a Savior who would would gather us up. This is the one who would redeem us. Holy Week and Easter shape our understanding of who we are as followers of Jesus, I believe, more than any other event or collection of events I've heard it said that we are an Easter people living in a good Friday world isn't that the truth 
that we are an Easter people. As a people of the resurrection, we know that the worst thing is never the last thing for us because of Jesus. But it seems like all too often we're living in a Good Friday world that loss and pain and suffering surrounds us. But the good news is, is that God is with us, that God walks with us in our pain. God walks with, with us in our loss. Thanks be to God.